Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, it's the I Blame Dennis Hopper podcast, starring Ileana Douglas. Eavesdrop with Ileana as she interviews Hollywood's most prominent players about filmmaking, acting, and what really happens on the set of your favorite flicks and TV shows. Hi, everyone. I am Ileana Douglas. I'm here with Tamara Berg, uh, my lovely co-host. And uh, we've decided, in, in, because of John Hurd's passing, we're going to replay the interview we did with them last week. And, you know, one of the most important things we talked about when we did the show and we started the show, and I want to thank, of course, Kevin Undegaro, Maria Menunas for giving me this opportunity, is that is to shine a light on actors that don't normally get spoken about, but who have inspired me, you know, beyond belief and continue to inspire me. And John was certainly one of those people. And I, you know, it's it's hard to have regrets, but, you know, my only regret is that I, I wish we, we had so many more questions to talk we to did. him about. But when we hung up, when we stopped the interview and I was... I mean, I called him in the car on the way home, and I was like, he was like, how did I do? I was like, you were amazing. It was great. And then when I went home that afternoon, and I was reading him all the Facebook posts, and I can't tell you how how truly touched he was, because this is something we talk about. You know, actors today, you know, they feel as if, if they're not in the spotlight, the people have forgotten about them. But, you know, I'm a movie fan. You're a movie fan. Uh, so many people out there that had so many great things to say to him and he was so optimistic about getting this surgery and getting back to work. Yeah. A funny story with John is I never really met John. I saw him in do theater as I said. He and Daniel Stern also wrote some beautiful words about him. Mm. But going to school in the 80s, John Hurd was the larger than life you know, Hemingway character that he was the reason, you know, you wanted to be an actor. Yeah. You wanted to, you know, live your life in this crazy way and, ha you know, with the highs and lows and do movies and be passionate, theater. And, and he had all of that in spades. And as he said, I fell in love with him the minute my mom took me to see Chilly Scenes of Winter, you know. And then to to just be on a sidewalk and, and watch him come out of the glass menagerie oh. after he'd performed, I was like, there's John Hurt. And that's how people used to feel whenever they would see him. And cut to many years later, I'm doing my pilot, Ileana Rama, with Ed Bagley Jr. And John Hurt just literally shows up with Ed on the set and he goes you you're doing this pilot why aren't i in it <laughs> what I, did you do i said you, after you, you picked yourself up off the ground i said you, you john you want to be in it you're you're in it you know and i was like quickly wrote him apart and the next thing i knew i'm like acting you know with john hurt in my television show and you know we became friends after that and as an actor's life is, you know, so you, you stay in touch. Sometimes you, you you don't stay in touch. I always tried to stay in touch with John. Um, and I remember even, you know, he'd moved up to Monterey and it was like, mm -hmm. I got that bell went off in me where it was like, I've got to get John on the podcast. Just, just like a few weeks ago. Yeah, I mm -hmm. said, come on, John, you got to come on. You got to come on. And and he was so hesitant because he, he, he really, he was like, oh, people don't care about me. I was... Yeah, so I'd never met him before, except mm -hmm. for, you know, meeting him when we did, when we did the podcast, and he was so, you know, goofy and funny, and, yeah. you know, before we went on the air when we were, when we were chatting, and so silly and great, and he, you described him, or you told me other people described him as irascible. He's irascible. He described himself <laughs> as being grouchy. Yes. Um, so I was wondering, sort of, what's what's your experience of him, you know, in real life? Because you did get to meet him and be friends with him. I mean, that's, he's, you know, he's Johnny Hurd. You know, he, like, to, to sometimes people pass away and you think, well, that's it, they're gone. Yeah. But with John, it's like, I can't believe, you know, he's, he's, 
some friends uh, we're all you know we're gonna get together wednesday to talk about him and mm. we were all saying like he's gonna haunt us and he's haunting us and you know did not have that smart aleck remark and that smirk uh he just was so smart and so intelligent and you know did he have demons yes um but that never got in the way of his work he was so dead serious about his work mm. And he just, he lived and died to be an actor. And I have, when I was playing you, as I said, some voice messages from, you know, when are you doing your movie? When are we going to work together? That's all he, it's what he lived for. Yeah. He just lived to be an actor. And he contri he contributed to so many of the films that he was in without people even realizing it. And I think that... I think that, you know, possibly the mistake he made early on was maybe being too dismissive of his own talent. Mm. And one of the things, again, if you want to go back and revisit some of his work, Cutter's Way, yeah. which has really been beautifully reexamined. Our, our friend uh, Eddie Muller, mm. who does a film noir, Noir Alley on TCM, is a huge fan of Cutter's Way and is wrote and uh, written about uh, Cutter's Way. Heartbeat is another incredible, and we got to talk about that in the interview. Um, Chilly Scenes of Winter is just my, he was such a true romantic in that, you know, in, in, in that movie. That's how I first discovered him. And another childhood favorite for me, The Scarlet Letter, just an incredible performance. And I don't know if people can get a hold of these. And of course, you've got the fun ones like, you know, Big, right. Awakenings, yeah. um, Beaches, of course. Um, Home Alone. Home Alone, yes. <laughs> I can't forget. What's so funny is, and, you know, we're so crazy. I mean, not outraged, but, you know, you just heard all actors have this, you know, our worst fear. I've done 50 movies and it's going to, you know, there's going to be yeah. one headline. And I think that one of the things that we did with the podcast that I'm so proud of and in talking about them on Facebook, Facebook is a forum for people to express their feelings outside of the mainstream media yeah. in a in a kind of a personal way even if the media takes a hold of it but that was for me and for other movie fans you know who loved John and thought of him as he was more than just the guy in uh in Home Alone you know and uh and I think that that he was elevated in in that sense that we were talking about him because he was one of those actors too I have met, uh, I mentioned this to another friend that was like Dennis Farina. You couldn't find a person that didn't like Dennis right. Farina, you know, or Bill Paxton or these, you know, the, 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 the guys that just, they work and they work and they work. And in the last conversation that I had with John, cause we spoke a lot on, uh, on Tuesday. And as I said, he was very optimistic and we were talking about when he got out of the, um, hospital and i said john it's your whole third act you know you're going to be you're going to be like the frederick march uh, melvin douglas parts you know you knock out alan alda you start taking <laughs> you start taking parts away from him and uh that's you know when we're laughing about it you know and actors and i said this you know before it's like it's true uh, you know actors are not taken as seriously and and artists in the society are not uh, taking it seriously, and one one of the headlines that that hit me uh, as a as an actor, you know, like uh, John Hurd dies alone in a hotel room, and so many actors are die. Yeah, because we're working all the time, right? We're trying to make movies to entertain the masses, and we are. We're the we've got the little sticks in our little bags, a little bag of tricks. And going from hotel to hotel, and it's sometimes it is a vagabond life, yeah. and sometimes I'm sure he was a person who made a lot of grave uh, sacrifices, and you know, but that doesn't affect for me the love of what he brought to cinema. Yeah, and there won't be anyone else, you know, like him. Yeah, and I wish we had, I wish we had more of him. But we have him in the interview. We and, do. And I'm there, thrilled there, about that. There were several things that he mentioned that if... So one of the things we're doing today is just requesting that people um, go find the podcast. The link will be uh, in the description of this um, 
conversation that we have. Mm -hmm. But you know, he talked about um, you know asking Penny Marshall, "Am I funny, Penny? Am I funny?" And he tells a funny well, story he, about that. And I said, I, I said, the, you know, why did Shirley MacLaine thank you in, in your book? I think he was a he was a person. He was irascible, you know, and he pushed buttons. And was he difficult because he was he was so smart? I mean, that's what I got from him. He I was agree. very very smart. Yeah. You know, and he also crossed over in a time, and these are usually my favorite actors and some of the ones we've had on the podcast. You know, as we got into the 90s and the 2000s, you know, cinema starts to drop out and you have the very top tier and the very low tier. Mm -hmm. And all the actors in the middle, all the character actors are suddenly scrambling and looking for work. And, you know, there wasn't that opportunity to, like, go do theater in the Midwest there, there is no theater. There's right. just big Broadway, you know, and, and that's it. There isn't that regional theater. You know, my grandfather, when his career fell apart, it's like you're able to do regional theater. You're able to right. make a living as an actor. But so many actors today, they just don't, you know, they don't have that ability. And again, like that's, I, I it, it, it's just such a challenge for me, for, for people that I love and admire uh, to see them struggling or see them not, you know, not get work. And again, I, I, that's why I love doing this show is that it, it's, it's that gentle reminder of, you know, just talking about these great contributions and that people have made that have affected me, that have affected all the fans and, and just giving everybody a second look and going back and saying, you know, Okay, maybe they haven't been done a movie in 20 years, but the fact that they made one movie and made one significant contribution to me, uh, you know, speaks speaks volumes. Indeed. So anyway, Indeed. God bless you, Johnny Hurd. Thanks, everybody. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.